water levels at the Panama Canal are actually causing a traffic jam in one of the largest trading routes in the world. 40% of all U.S. container traffic passes through it. About $270 billion of trade each year rides on this ribbon of water. Amidst the heart of global trade, the world's largest canal undergoes a horrific transformation. The Panama Canal, essential to international trade, has dried up. The worrying development of the Panama Canal is so sudden that it could have great consequences for global trade. The Panama Canal is one of the most crucial waterways in the world. The ongoing water crisis it threatens the future of the maritime route. What made the canal dry up? How will this strange shift affect the economies of nations? Join us as we uncover what is happening to the world's largest canal and how terrifying it is. The world's largest canal is drying up. Once a busy center for various types of ships, the Panama Canal is now struggling to maintain the water levels required for its critical activities. It's having some difficulty retaining water. Seriously, the Panama Canal's sudden drought is strange right now. Here's the kicker. This entire scenario raises severe problems for foreign trade. The Panama Canal is like an express lane between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, making shipping much faster. However, when water levels fall, the entire system suffers. The current predicament has us all wondering if the Panama Canal, a technological marvel, can withstand time. It's not just a local issue. We're discussing the broader picture and how it may disrupt maritime traffic worldwide. The world is holding its breath, waiting for answers on the future of this vital waterway, which has played a major role in global trade for almost 100 years. The Panama Canal is facing an unprecedented challenge. Now, here's the inside scoop on what's causing trouble. Gatun Lake relies on consistent rains to keep the Panama Canal running efficiently. But guess what? This system's delicate equilibrium is being put to the test as a result of droughts induced by erratic weather. It's disrupting the canal's routine operations, and we wonder if it can withstand the storm. We must investigate the canal's capacity to cope with changing environmental circumstances, especially given the major threat of water loss. So, the story of the Panama Canal is like a roller coaster ride. It transitioned from being an epic technical marvel to struggling under the consequences of climate change. The entire water resource depletion drama shows the wild dance between human intelligence and nature's unexpected movements. It's made us think hard about managing this critical resource that keeps international trade running. Now, let's talk about the water that flows through the canal's sophisticated network of locks. It's like a magical potion that raises and lowers boats as they pass through. But here's the catch. With each voyage, much of this fresh water is depleted and ends up in the ocean. Even if the system performs admirably, it still has certain flaws, particularly when the environment throws a curveball. The current water level condition in the canal is unprecedented, posing a difficulty greater than any previous water-related issues. The Panama Canal's fresh water serves as its lifeblood, keeping the lock mechanism operational and allowing ships to go up and down the canal smoothly. This resource is as delicate as glass. Why? Because it is in low supply, it is lost for good once thrown back into the ocean after a journey. What makes it even trickier? We can't get it back. It only goes in one direction. With the environment and water supply hanging in a thin balance at the moment, the fragility of this resource is brought to light. The current scenario is vastly different from the canal's previous problems. We've had our fair share of water issues, but it's a severe step up this time. The canal's capacity to handle these extraordinary water difficulties is being tested to the limit, and we're all wondering if it can recover. The canal's drought could be a subtle blessing in disguise, as it prompts us to examine conservation techniques, sustainable practices, and novel solutions more closely. We must be imaginative to ensure that this critical conduit for international maritime trade does not literally go down the drain. Currently, the Panama Canal relies on Alajuela Lake and Gatun Lake to keep the water moving. These lakes function similarly to the VIP source, replenished by heavy rains. 
However, these lakes suffer from unusual weather patterns and a lack of precipitation. Their water levels are decreasing dramatically, causing problems with the canal's lock system. Why is fresh water so critical for the operation of the canal? Okay, let's break it down. The lock system is the unsung hero here, making it easy for ships to navigate between seas. But here's the thing. It's a bit of a water hog. For example, fresh water requires filling the locks and leveling the ships, not so much when we're running low on the vital water. When the canal runs low on water, it's like mayhem central. Ships must wait indefinitely, may have to lower their loads, and the canal slams the brakes on everything in the worst-case situation, becoming a total nightmare. Previous events, such as the El Nino weather phenomenon, have thrown off the canal's mojo. It disrupts rainfall, causing further disruptions to the canal's water supply. It's like a domino effect, with the canal becoming extremely sensitive to what's happening around it. We need a firm strategy to handle this water crisis or things might become messy. The Panama Canal is a delicate balance between adequate fresh water and ensuring the lock system functions smoothly. It's all about finding that sweet spot that keeps things running smoothly. So, if we want the canal to be competitive in the long run, we need to make some long-term changes. We're talking about confronting climate change and addressing current challenges. The canal is extremely important for ships worldwide. However, with water shortages causing havoc, the canal faces new issues. The cool aspect is that, throughout its history, the canal has always rebounded. It's like a seasoned veteran who understands how to adapt to changing circumstances. The canal's managers are attempting to address the declining water levels. They've included useful water-saving basins that recycle water when the lock closes. It starts in the right direction, but it needs to address the primary issue. The canal is running out of water. If we want the canal to continue functioning, we must find a solution to this problem. The Panama Canal's closure is a significant problem for world trade since it connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, speeding ship voyages. But before assigning fingers, we need to understand why this critical trade channel is running out of steam. Climate change disrupts normal rainfall patterns leaving the canal's freshwater sources high and dry. Mother Nature is truly testing this technological wonder with some unexpected actions. Playing the blame game is tempting, but we must dive deep and determine what drives the canal's depletion to maintain this commerce lifeline. Before implementing long-term solutions, let's first address the underlying problems. This canal is in a genuine war with nature's surprises, and we must develop clever answers. So, here's the scoop. More and more ships are passing through the Panama Canal, a huge game-changer for worldwide trade. However, because of the increasing demand for its services, we consume more fresh water than ever since lock operations require a large amount of water. The canal was designed to carry a set number of ships, but our insatiable demand for global trade has far exceeded its initial capacity. Despite the expensive enhancements, the canal's water problems are worsening due to the excessive volume of boat traffic. We need a robust strategy to address this issue that considers natural and artificial causes. It's the only way to make things right and keep this critical commerce route functioning smoothly. Some segments of the Panama Canal are more than a century old. Experts are raising their eyebrows since these older components may need to be more seamless than the gleaming new systems. So you have this old-school infrastructure, and the increased demand for the canal exacerbates the water depletion problem. A few juicy events have been going on in the Panama Canal unnoticed, and it's like getting a whole makeover, but not in a good manner. Urbanization and removing trees for farming have disrupted the soil's natural ability to retain water. Trees are like VIPs for controlling water levels and ensuring a regular flow into rivers and lakes. However, we have less water to play with with fewer trees, negatively impacting the canal's operations. It's like a domino effect. New research raises concerns about Gatun Lake, a major Panama Canal water supply contributor. It turns out that the lake's sedimentation rate is increasing. Consider this, a silt deposit that resembles clutter and interferes with the lake's ability to retain water. To add to the drama, 
shifting weather patterns contribute to less water entering the canal system. The damage to the Panama Canal has major economic effects. Other ideas exist about why the canal has suddenly become thirsty, but experts agree. We need a strategy that involves more than simply filling the canal. It's about preventing another water crisis. Why is the Panama Canal so frequently called the world's crossroads? It has been the primary route between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans for over a century. Back then, sailors had to cope with the dangerous Cape Horn, which added significant distance and time to their travels. But then came the canal, which changed the game for international trade and made maritime routes far more efficient. Consider your most recent purchase, an appliance, clothing, or food. Most likely, some of that goods traveled through the Panama Canal in the speedy lane. And here's the best part. It speeds up shipment and provides some financial benefits. These savings are typically passed on to us, the customers, making it a win-win situation. The canal is more than a shortcut. It's also a game changer for our finances. The Panama Canal is more than simply a canal. It's the economic powerhouse of global trade. It's the magical way for commodities worth 270 billion annually. That is more than just a figure. It represents employment, industries, and entire economies that depend on the canal's seamless operation. It's a huge problem, much beyond some boring facts. Closing the Panama Canal is more than simply a glitch in product flow. It is an outright economic calamity. They act as a barricade, making it difficult to proceed by ship. Consider this. Ships must navigate past these obstructions, resulting in extremely long wait times or expensive costs. As if that weren't enough, backup plans with alternate routes become more expensive and time-consuming, putting the supply chain under extreme stress. It's a chain reaction, and no one wants that type of anarchy in commerce. Due to low water levels, the canal's big guns are acting as traffic cops, restricting the number of ships authorized each day. However, some ships bid insane sums of money in auctions to gain priority access. It's like a bidding war, escalating already high expenditures. Who is feeling the heat? Grain, gas, and oil trades are disrupted, potentially jeopardizing U.S. exports and driving worldwide price increases. If grain shipments continue to plummet, other nations, such as Brazil, may step in and take the trade limelight. The major shipping companies also impose additional fees to compensate for rising costs. It's like a double blow for everyone concerned. The reduced water flow generates problems for marine habitats, disrupting plant and animal life. Furthermore, when longer routes are taken more frequently, we may expect a rise in carbon emissions, fueling the global warming fire. It's like a large, jumbled puzzle with components that touch everything, from our wallets to the environment. Scientists are debating whether the canal's drying is unintentionally hastening climate change. It's like a heated dispute right now, but they're on a quest to work things out long term, looking into new water supplies and water saving technology, and even discussing enlarging or upgrading the canal to handle larger ships and adapt to changing climates. They're focusing on rapid measures such as restricting water and reducing daily canal traffic. It's a race against the clock to keep everything afloat. And remember that the canal's future is uncertain, which makes us more motivated to preserve its history. It's as if we're on a mission to preserve this piece of history indefinitely. Let's briefly journey down memory lane to see how this big project came to be. The notion of creating a canal through Panama has been around since the 16th century. People have long desired to build a ship bypass to facilitate trade between the two great seas. Let's get into the time machine for a while. In 1534, Spain's big shot, King Charles the Thieve, was about to discover a shortcut through the Americas for ships traveling between Spain and Peru. Why? To outperform the Portuguese in a military clash. Fast forward to 1668, when Sir Thomas Brown, an English smarty pants, drops some wisdom in his book, Pseudodoxia Epidemica. He's telling about how the water has eaten away certain isthmuses, while humans have chopped through others with a spade. And he suggests we visit the Panama Isthmus. It's only a few miles wide, but might be a fantastic shortcut to the East Indies and China. Over the years, people have tried to develop business links around Panama because, let's face it, that little isthmus is in a bad place between two big seas. 
However, not all strategies were successful. Take the Kingdom of Scotland's Darien scheme from 1698. It was a complete failure. They intended to establish an overland commerce route, but it crashed and burned by 1700 due to terrible luck. In 1788, Americans had the brilliant idea of having the Spanish build the canal because they held the regions where it was meant to travel. They believed that after the canal was completed, tropical ocean currents would naturally enlarge it. They felt it would be far less dangerous for ships than traveling around South America. During his journey from 1788 to 1793, Alessandro Malaspina drafted some plans for the canal. What a forward-thinking approach. Rewind when Spanish explorers imagined a feasible path between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. That's where the huge project began. They were looking at a little stretch of land known as the Isthmus of Panama. It offered the prospect of a shortcut that might completely transform international trade. But back then, it was like attempting to capture a rainbow. A nice notion, but not feasible with the technology available. Fast forward to 1513, and Vasco Nunes de Balboa is the adventurer to beat. He becomes the first European to cross the Isthmus and see the Pacific Ocean. Isn't this a total game changer? That find ignited a fire under everyone's boots, and the fantasy of a canal became a lot more tangible. Let's jump back to the late 1800s, when the French, buoyed by their Suez Canal success, resolved to go big or go home with the Panama Canal idea. Inspired by the Suez's success, they were prepared to face the extraordinary obstacles of the Panama Isthmus to build a canal that would change the course of international marine routes. So, in 1881, the French launched the Panama Canal construction team, directed by the brilliant thinker Ferdinand de Lesseps, who was also responsible for the Suez Canal project. But, here's the narrative twist. This entire gig developed into a story of enormous battles and disappointments, the region's lush jungles, muddy soil, and towering mountains made progress feel like an endless uphill slog. And if that wasn't enough, the labor was decimated by plagues like yellow fever and malaria, leaving everyone wondering if the dream was worth the effort. It was like a roller coaster of highs and lows, with most of them being lows. Panama's topography proved a formidable opponent, starkly contrasting with the Suez Canal, which cut through a flat desert. The challenging terrain threw a curveball for the French, and the dream of a transoceanic canal began to unravel. By 1899, more than two decades into the project, and having depleted significant resources, the French were waving the white flag. Fatalities increased, expenditures skyrocketed, and that once shiny goal appeared to be slipping through their fingers. It was a severe setback to the ambitious aim of building a vital canal connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. This entire chapter seemed like a roller coaster of difficulty and determination. The once unbeatable mountains and woodlands served as a reminder of the French mission's enormous challenges. The catastrophic first attempt, headed by de Lesseps, exposed the enormous hurdles of transforming a great notion into a feasible reality. That failure reverberated throughout the canal's history like a huge crash. But here's the twist. Little did the world realize that the goal of a Panama Canal would continue in the face of adversity. Nope, a new chapter with daring new ideas and unwavering commitment was about to begin. Following the French debacle, Americans saw an opportunity to convert the canal dream into a strategic and commercial treasure. After learning from France's mistakes, the United States seized the initiative in 1904. They had several engineering greats, including John Frank Stevens, Washington Guthels, and John Findlay Wallace. What's the American game plan? It was all about invention, my buddy. They introduced a game changer and a lock-based mechanism. Consider elevating ships to the higher reaches of a lake, and then gradually lower them to the lower level downstream. This brilliant maneuver killed two birds with one stone. Less digging was required and the difficulties that had plagued previous attempts were no longer an issue. Guided by a team of elite engineers, the Americans approached this difficult challenge with new eyes and a step-by-step -step strategy. By navigating Panama's complex topography, they changed the whole canal-building game. The lock-based system demonstrated their incredible ability to adapt and persevere, even when things were extremely difficult. It's as if they transformed hardship into their playground. So, when the United States took command, it was a completely different atmosphere. 
the engineers began thinking like crazy scientists, coming up with brilliant ideas that propelled the canal from the garbage of past blunders into the limelight of success. The once fanciful notion of a transoceanic canal became a reality, demonstrating that inventive problem-solving, strategic planning, and unwavering perseverance can overcome even the most impossible challenges. The first vessel to cross the Panama Canal. August 15, 1914. The SS Ancon passes through the Panama Canal, fulfilling centuries-old hopes. It's like a rock star moment in engineering history, demonstrating the human race's courage and ability. But wait, there's more to this astounding effort than meets the eye. A big, sophisticated network of design and navigation is worth considering. The Panama Canal is more than simply a waterway. It is a feat of engineering that spans approximately 50 miles from the Atlantic to the Pacific. The canals function similarly to water elevators, raising and lowering boats as they pass through various canal areas. It's like a watery dance choreographed by engineering magicians. Ever wondered why they didn't just carve a straight path between the oceans? It's like an elaborate dance of locks along the canal's route. It's more than just digging, it's about strategic positioning. These locks are like unsung heroes, balancing the various heights on the Atlantic and Pacific sides, so boats can easily move up and down. The Gatun locks act as superheroes, elevating ships to assist them in their journey to the Pacific. This clever innovation reduces the need for extensive excavating and provides a smooth ride for boats of all sizes. So, the Panama Canal is more than a crazy concept. It's a brilliant technical feat that solves the logistical challenges of the Panama Isthmus. Let us take a minute to admire the creativity behind those locks, which ensures ships glide through easily and solidify the canal's reputation as a display of human brilliance. Hats off to the SS Ancon's historic trip, too. Panama's terrain could be more cooperative, especially in the center, with a notable height difference. Attempting to cut a straight road through this rocky mass would be a digging nightmare. What's the intelligent solution? Installing locks to hoist ships up to the Laki and gently drop them down the opposite side. Enter Gatun Lake, an engineering marvel within the canal. It covers 164 square miles and serves as a canal lock system reservoir. The lake's huge size and ingenious architecture help keep those locks functioning smoothly. It's as if nature and engineering are working together to deliver a faultless performance. The lock mechanism is where the magic occurs. Water from Tool Lake rushes in, raising the ship to the lake's surface. When it strikes the sweet spot, the gates swing open, allowing the ship to sail into the lake on the opposite side. Reverse the process, and the ship will glide to sea level before leaving the canal. Every time a ship passes, 52 million gallons of pristine water from Gatun Lake spill into the ocean. It's like a huge performance, demonstrating how important the lock system is for safely directing ships between the two sides. Let's look at the lock system, which keeps the Panama Canal under control. It's like an engineering ballet, with gates and water released precisely. This is more than simply rescuing water from Gatun Lake. It is a brilliant effort demonstrating human intelligence. Imagine a symphony of brightness as ships dance through the locks, emphasizing the delicate balance between environmental stewardship and human innovation. What about the 52 million gallons that splash into the water each time a ship passes? Gatun Lake is exercising its might, demonstrating that the unsung hero keeps the canal running smoothly. It's a major thing, emphasizing the lake's critical position in the canal's balance. The lock mechanism deserves a standing ovation. It's like an exquisite dance that gracefully coordinates ships' regulated ups and downs. The canal pilots, however, are the true unsung heroes. With their experience and careful planning, these professionals are the secret sauce that keeps ships moving smoothly through locks and lakes. The Panama Canal is kept afloat by a tight-knit combination of brilliant design, cutting-edge engineering, and these guys' professional leadership. 
Watching the insane volume of water dancing the dance during a canal ride highlights the wonderful collaboration between Gatun Lake's natural vibrations and the canal's artificial mojo. It's like this dance where human ingenuity and nature fist bump, displaying a delicate equilibrium that clicks. In all of its beauty, the Panama Canal becomes a symbol of teamwork and understanding allowing global maritime trade to pass through its waters without difficulty. Now, traveling down the canal is a very different ball game. Even high-ranking ship captains hand the steering to a canal pilot. And let's speak about the water. How does the canal maintain it running so smoothly? It's like a tropical rain jackpot. The skies lavishly flood the region, overflowing Gatun Lake, the canal's main water source. But here's the twist. As climate change throws curveballs, keeping this natural water supply in its happy location is becoming increasingly difficult. As ships pass through the locks and channels, it's like seeing ship commanders and canal pilots dance. It's a delicate dance, and ships rely on these highly educated professionals to guide the way. But are we leaning too heavily on nature's replenishing game? That is a danger that has the potential to disrupt the canal's water level any time from now. Something is not only happening in the world's largest canal, but also with the James Webb Space Telescope, as it just launched its brand new JWST Special Edition phone cases. Get yours by clicking the link on the screen or following the link in the description. Outro. Do you think there's a bigger environmental problem due to the biggest canal suddenly drying up? Please share your ideas in the comments section, like, and subscribe to our channel.